Hello there, everyone. Um, again, today at the request of a viewer, I'm going to share my thoughts on Sand Spring Resources. I know there are a few more um, names that you have added. You, the general you, the viewers have asked me about. Don't worry, I have a list. Uh, if I haven't replied in some short form of comment, it means it's on my list and I'm getting to it. So uh, thanks. And with that, I'm going to get into Sandspring. So the first thing that I think is very important to understand when looking at something like Sandspring Resources is that it's an optionality play, meaning it's a type of investment that doesn't really make that much sense at today's uh, prices of, in this case, gold, but it rapidly increases value as the price of gold reaches a certain point in sand springs case the number they're talking about is one thousand four hundred dollar gold next thing i feel like it's important to talk about is the effects that a stream could have on a project and now it's interesting because this is kind of like the opposite of uh, an optionality play where a stream in this case, they agreed to sell 10% of their gold at $400 in exchange for an initial help with the capex and 50% of their silver at 390 which the effect that this would have is that if the price of gold gets to $1,400, their effective price of gold is $1,300. Similarly, if it gets to $1,750, their effective price is $1,615, or if it gets to 2,500, their effective, the price that they totally sell gold at is 2,290. It's not that difficult to figure out what their effective price is for a uh, specific gold price. If that's your target, you could just look at the little formula I did down there if, uh, if you didn't know how, but it's pretty simple. Okay, now looking at the specific case for Sandspring and my thoughts on the company. Firstly, that's a lot of gold. 10 million ounces in one project, that is significant, and that's the type of thing that usually I'd expect a major to be looking at. I say usually because in this case, at these gold prices, I wouldn't expect a major to be looking at. However, if gold were to solidify much higher, I would expect uh, a major to look at and potentially buy this out. Why is that? Because this project is relatively low grade, which is why there's that much gold at that in one spot and it still requires higher gold. So that's important to understand. Low grade, more expensive, so needs higher gold. Now I wanna preface this flip side commentary by saying as a general rule, share count doesn't really matter in isolation. A lot of people think it does. A lot of people, this thing has too many shares, it's no good, or not enough shares, or whatever. I don't think it matters, and if you disagree, I'd love to hear why. Um, but I just wanted to comment that this company has 209 million shares and then 95 million warrants. Um, and in addition to the 10 million options, giving it a total share count of 315 million. Now, why do I mention this if I should say share count doesn't matter? Well, because they added 41 million shares and 41 million options in, or warrants, not options, in July, um, which resulted in potentially a 26% increase in their share count. And they did this so they could add a secondary project. Now, I mention this commentary probably because I don't think that that's the uh, actions of a f necessarily fully focused management group on their f uh, main project. However, I can see buying um, gold companies at these prices, obviously. So I don't, I haven't looked too closely at what they bought. My comment is mainly that with companies like this, you have to watch out for dilution because that is a main risk. So now we get into the simple math of what I call hopes and dreams. Basically, if everything turns out right, if the gold price turns around immediately and there's no 
uh, prolonged period of more dilution at lower prices, etc. What is what could this company be worth given today's information? Well, um, net present value five percent discount, which may not be enough, but whatever it seems to be the standard, is six hundred and sixty-seven million at fourteen hundred dollar gold. Now. This is including their streaming deal, but not including a potential for some new uh, run of river power generation thing. So that's a bit complicated. Anyway, um, fully diluted, 315.5 million shares, giving a net present value per share of $2.11 at $1,400 gold. Again, remember, that's important. Um, but they will need to raise... Um, between 330 million and 450 million, depending on if they do their power uh, plant um, before they start production. Now, again, uh, they do have some plan. I'm not sure what the cost of those ounces would be, but they do have a plan to mine some easy access ounces before they start the construction because that will provide them with some cash flow, they estimate up to 45 million, but I don't know how much that would cost, et cetera. So I'm, I'm discounting that from this um, because it, they don't seem to have any solid numbers. Um, but interestingly, if you look at 211, which is their net present value per share, and a more a higher case of what it would take them uh, dilution terms, were they to dilute and raise money that way, of 8.18 to build out the uh, uh, mine plus the power generation, then if you divide that to get, if they were to dilute it entirely to build the mine, what the share would be worth at $1,400 gold, and it's 25.8 cents, basically, meaning that if they were to dilute, if they were to issue shares in order to fund their mine fully at today's, or not even at today's price, at $1,400 gold, which is their construction case, then their fair share price would be less than 26 cents. Now here's where it, I turn more from cautiously optimistic to uh, slightly bullish. Let's look at your fellow shareholders. Well. It's more than a quarter owned by insiders, and then you have 9.3%, and I don't know how much uh, warrants he has in addition to this. I imagine a substantial amount, but you have Frank Giestra, who is one of, he's a legend within the space, basically. He's built, been part of building many companies, big investor in gold. This is someone you want on your team. Okay, and now I want to show you why analyzing this stock at today's prices, or 1400 is not really what you'd want to do for something like this. If you look at the bottom axis of this chart, picture that as increasing gold price. Now, if you look at the yellow at the bottom, that's what the earnings would be, or cash flow or whatever. This isn't real numbers. But if you look at the top, the orange at the top, that is the percentage increase of the earnings. So if you look all the way at the left, that's approximately where we are now, no earnings, no value in the company. But as the price of gold increases, the percentage of the earnings increases dramatically. So what you'd have to do when looking for a value in something like this is pick a target of higher gold prices. Because if you think gold prices are gonna stay in this realm, you don't want something like this. If you think they're going much higher, then the value in something like this could be your way of uh, maximizing the run. So for this thing, my big question for Sandstone Resources, which I think uh, has a major impact on the value proposal, at least, is how will they finance? Will they use the Wheaton deal as their equity portion and use debt for the rest? Will they issue shares and um, build out that way? Will some of the money come in for warrants and they use the rest of debt? That is the big question. Well, that is the big question. There are some other questions also in how you want to value this. 
because you need to know what gold, what price gold you think is going in today's dollars, and B, how long will it take to get to a construction case, like to get above 1400? Because as long as it stays below 1400, you're probably getting diluted in the vicinity of maybe five, maybe 10% a year, maybe more. So you have to know that, right? You have to have an idea of what you think that might be before you buy this. And also you have to have a look at the where you think gold is going and plug that into your net present value calculator for this thing. And then this is crucial, absolutely crucial. Compare that to other gold stocks. Compare the change. Because if you think gold is going to $2,000 and you think, wow, this thing's going to double. By the way, I think it'll more than double. But you have to realize that other gold stocks will perform quite well also. So, you know, that's important to look at as well. And an important note on the price of gold. I mentioned in the last slide, um, in today's dollars. Why is that? Well, if you think gold is going to double because the value of a dollar or currencies in general is going to be cut in half, well then that doesn't necessarily help you because the costs will double also. So look at what you think gold will be worth in today's dollars. So in conclusion, this is a stock, it's a very speculative. You'll need to have high risk tolerance if you want to even consider buying it. Secondly, I think you'll probably be looking at north of $2,000 gold and the price of gold staying there, um, not just a spike. And you'll probably want it to get above $1,400 in the next year and a half. If you don't think these are going to happen, then you're probably better off going somewhere else. But if you do think these are going to happen, or if they're understatements or whatever, then this stock could perform quite well. So as always, everyone, who got to this point and who fell off along the way, thanks for watching. Um, if you want me to review any other specific stock, please let me know. Um, I'll add it to my list. Do you disagree with this one? Have I, did I say something in this video that you thought was, oh, I didn't think about that, or oh, this guy nah, doesn't know what he's talking about, or whatever. Something that you that made you think about something. I'd love to hear about what that might have been. Um, but until the next one, or until the next time, I'll wish you a great day, and see you then.